the Enhancer plugin. Add some mood to your edit in Final Cut Pro. Now this is a Final Cut Pro tutorial, or rather a review on the Mac, by Robert Chalmers. Now how colours can set the mood of a film in Final Cut Pro X. The Enhancer is a unique and powerful tool that offers film-like controls over your image. It can emulate film stock, add film grain, apply old school film colouring techniques, and add physical film characteristics like gate weave. If you've previously used any of the film converters, then you already have some idea of what Dehancer can do. However, Dehancer's suite of tools go well beyond what any of the others can do. The Dehancer team has put a lot of effort into emulating the analog film process to create this powerful plugin. You can learn more about Dehancer at that following address, https www.dehancer.com. That's D-E-H-A-N-C-E-R dot com. You can also save 10% off your purchase with the promo code in uppercase R-A Chalmers. R-A-C-H-A-L-M-E-R-S. Too easy. And you'll see that in the description. So let's have a look at Final Cut Pro and Dehancer. I've got two clips exactly the same here, and the first clip, as you can see here, that's just going straight along. Let me um, get right from the start, and we'll play that from the start. There we go, just moves along. Plain colours, nothing fancy. A bit of a transition. Now we go to one that's actually quite different. Now how have we done that? Let's just stop it there. Put the cursor there, highlight it. Now we can see that Dehancer is enabled, the film emulation, and it's there. And there's the preview, and you can see it's quite different. It's using Kodak Gold 200 of the film emulations that are there, the profile, and there's lots of them, Kodak Gold 200, and you can see how easily they slot in. Let's try a Kodak. Ultramax 400 as opposed to the Gold 200. There's not a big difference there, is there? We've got that there, we've got that there. Kodak Ultramax, well it's Kodak, so that's the point. Let's try Polaroid Polychrome. This is a 35mm film. This will be quite different. Now that's very old, very retro, so you can see there's quite a difference there. But one key click, never mind all the settings down here, you don't need to worry about those. You can of course change them, and we'll look at that in a moment. But what we're looking at first is the, is the vast range, and we've even got the... Uh, Prokudin Gorski 1906 experimental film here. There you go. Now that's very nice. I think that's very retro. Try the last one in the road, 1991, and black and white. Very nice. Monochrome. Savannah Type 42. I'll leave it back at the Gorski one at the moment because I really like that one and that one will do for the moment. Now let's have a look at the list right from the top. The input types, sources, cameras, temperatures, films, print, exposure and we'll work our way down that list. Let's have a look right from square one at the big scrolling list on the right hand side. We've got OBS turned on, we've got film emulation turned on here, and you can see that highlight there, that's, that's there with the little preview. Now over this side we've got our major list all the way down. Sources 
Rec Recorder 709. Now this is fairly standard for film recordings that you download from places like Envato Elements and online resources. It's very standard. And that's where this clip came from, remember. So let's have a look down here. We've got Enable Temperature Compensation. Let's enable that source as the input. Tin Compensation, you can make all sorts of adjustments there. The Film, which is more important for us, we're just going to leave that. If you've got a particular camera source, you can probably bring it in there. Choose Camera. But we're just going to leave that because we want to look at this. We want to look at the film. I'm not worried about those settings there. You can fiddle with those to get the exact setting you want. Now I'm looking for a 70s, 80s, early spy thriller type format. And that's what we've got there. And the Kodak Vision 3 500T is pretty close to it. But we can, in, we can change all that. As you saw, there's many changes there. But we won't go through those again. We just did those. Now we can, it's enabled, so we can push pull. And you can do some radical changes there with that. Can't push it too far and you can't pull it. You can see how that's pulled the colour back there. Okay, let's just leave it sit there as near as I can get to uh, zero, one, two, three. There we go. Ah. Zero. That's what we want. You can enable that or disable it. Disabling it doesn't make much difference. But here, if you enable it, if you disable it, you're back to the original image. Now there we go. Okay, that's not a lot of difference. I like the vision one, but let's go for something. Go for a Kodak Porter. There we go. Now that's enhanced it slightly. We'll leave it at that for the moment. The black points and white points. Color mode normal. You don't want to expand those. Mm. Maybe we can darken the corners up a little bit. That's nice. There we go. That's given a, a little bit of mood. Now print is the one we're looking at here. And print is the one where you're printing a film. Remember we're dealing with film here, not digital cameras and iPhones and things like that. So we've got a linear profile. We're going to print, going to expose it, the tonal contrast and the color density and the saturation. Saturation is 100%. But see what happens if we reduce saturation. Almost no color there. But we'll leave that at 100%. The tonal contrast you can see how that's changing the tone. I'll set that to 50. Back out, back down to minus 27. Let's just leave that one at zero. If we can get it to zero, we a lot of messing about. There we go. And the color density, much the same. Go one way, go the other way. Those sliders give you a great deal of control over the finished image. And because I'm too lazy to type in the numbers here, there we go. Saturation, we tried that one. Average range limiter, mm, enable. Okay. Now the color head, you can change the colors in the image. Let's have a look at this. Let's push it towards the blue. You can see that immediately. You can go really radical with this if you like. You can go right up there. But let's go to about 20. Mm, probably a bit of greenish tinge in there. So let's go back to magenta. Oops, a bit too far. There's how's that minus 6. That'll give us a bit of magenta. I don't want the red in there. So we'll go for KN. There we go. Now that's definitely mm, early 80s. Early 80s mood. Preserve exposure, yes, all that's fine. Now, film grain. That one's ticked on, and you want a really grainy film. 
Now, this was quite a flat image, remember, when we first started out. So let's increase the size of the film grains. I mean, you can go really radical if you like. That's up to 12. Now, look how grainy that is. That's like sandpaper. So we'll take it back to 8. Very grainy. The amount, that's the amount of grain. It's set to 20. Look at the grain in there. That's, that's, like, a, that's like a desert storm if you'll forgive the phrase. 40, ah, oh, 42, I wanted it 40. There we go. Oh no, not quite. Okay, let's do it the easy way. <laughs> okay, film resolution, hmm, 50%. Well, we don't want to sharpen it up, so we'll leave that. Shadows, do you want to bring up the shadows a little bit? It's not going to change it much with all that grain in there. That's very grainy, but that's what I wanted, remember? Highlights, chroma film, halation. Now, halation is not going to have a big effect on this. There's a few highlights there, background gain, smoothness. I won't play with the halation or the bloom. You don't want bloom around that. If you're dealing with street lights and um, party lights and you're in a disco somewhere or you've got a film with um, particularly if it's one of them old set in Central Europe with all the um, prisoner of war camps and the big lot arc lamps that are around the borders I, um, they really lend themselves to messing with with those ones there the halation and bloom now we've got vignettes do we want to we can, we can, that's 0 0.25. Well, we've got to turn it on first, haven't we? Enable vignette. Okay. Bring it down. Bring it in. You can see the vignette effect. The feather is set at 100, but let's, you can set it to a circle if you like and just feather the edges slightly. Now he's very much in focus and everything else is not. Now film breath is one that I like and we should be able to try that. Film breath is the slight movement you get in film like in the background and things like that when it's going past the gate in the projector. Remember this is film not digital. Now you can give it that effect by turning this on. Enable. Now gate, we've gate breath. There we go. Turn on the breath. Now that's the standard settings there. And these guys know their stuff. So let's see what happens. You'll just see some movement there, should do. Okay, let's try that again, shall we? Yes, you can see it's not much. I'm not talking about heaps of movement here. I'm talking about the film going past the gate. Going, going past the projector head. Okay, now I've got that moved up there. We've got to go all the way down to the bottom to find the gate weave, of course, is a slightly different thing. And it's similarly connected. Sometimes the film in those old gates jumped around a little bit. And that's what we're looking at here. You may see some movement, you may not. Backgrounds, shoulders, things like that. It's very slight in this. Some images depending on the image you're working with, it will be quite impactful. Now the others, I'll leave for the false color, output, impact, LUT generator. You can actually create LUTs. Check your profiles and your licensing info. And that's just about it for that whole um, series of things that are on there. And of course, that Kodak Porter or Portra, I should say, 160NC is enabled. And now, 
I've turned it off, but all our other settings are still there because you can see they're enabled. But that just gives it that extra effect. Let's see what it looks like with the Rolly. There we go, not much difference because those other settings are there. Kodak, Kodak, Kodak Gold, Kodak Extra, Ektachrome, E100, Kodak Color Plus 200. There we go. That's not bad. Kodak's good film for spy movies. And basically, that's about all there is to it. I hope you enjoy that. And if you really like it, go along to dehancer.com and download a free copy of it. It will leave a, um, a watermark on the film, the free copy, but that's all right. And if you like it, use my 10% discount code. You'll get 10% off the price of it.